Hey, what's happening, people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, host Yan. I hope you lot are doing well, and welcome to today's video, which is, yes, <laughs> the return of the Premier League. Man, it is a big one. Chelsea versus Manchester City, away in the Etihad. This is a fire rubber. Maybe not the fire rubber of the weekend, because Jose Mourinho is back in the London derby. But I tell you what, this could be a significant game in the title race. Yep, I said it. Not just because Liverpool could pull away from everyone, but maybe Chelsea could crawl ever so slightly closer into that conversation. Maybe. Manchester City are also not the same Manchester City as last season. They're hamstrung for a few reasons, which I'm going to get into in today's match preview. Before I do, I want to let you guys know that this video is brought to you by Akatips, which is a unique service that uses an AI to give you the edge when betting on football. Akatips now has a new service where it consolidates loads of stats to do with one match and puts it into one area. So you don't need to go around searching multiple websites. These stats range from things like a team's average number of corners they get, or the clean sheets they have so far. All this data that gives you the edge when betting. Right then, let's get into the video. Oh yeah, remember to subscribe to Football Therapy and hit the bell notifications icon. So, Frank Lampard, Pep Guardiola, both playing exciting football, both at the top-ish echelons of the Premier League. In fact, Chelsea are above Manchester City. Chelsea are joint second behind Liverpool with Leicester at the moment. Manchester City are sitting in fourth place after they had their 3-1 loss away at Anfield where they played quite well in spells, I thought. But, you know, the drama took over. Pep seems to have lost his mind a little bit in that game. And the epic box office narrative of the Premier League rolls on. Last season, this fixture was not a happy one for Chelsea Football Club. They lost 6-0 to Guardiola City when Sarri brought over his Chelsea side. This didn't go the way they planned. They tried to open up a bit more, I guess, and it, they got turned over completely. But a lot has changed since then. City have got injuries and suspensions and just... Still a couple of problems at the moment. Chelsea have got a new coach in Frank Lampard. They're buoyed by belief. A massive feel-good factor. All the kids are playing awesome. And they're playing attacking football. And they're on a massive winning run. So Chelsea are in a really good place right now. Man City are still actually massive favourites by the bookmakers. But if you talk to pundits, football fans, and just you know people like football, they'll all say, you know what, I'll give Chelsea a chance. So how is this game going to go? What's going to happen? Well, let's talk about that a little bit more with formations and open up that analysis screen. Whoosh, on the screen next to me is the lineup that Pep Guardiola sent out last time in the Premier League when they lost at Anfield. Now, the midfield has changed in Manchester City and certainly the defence has. The whole back line has been sort of... I don't know, dismantled in many ways with, inj with company leaving, uh, Ottoman being bad or injured and Stones not really playing much and their best centre-back, Omeri Lepore, being injured as well. Oh yeah, and them just not having a left-back. This has forced Fernandinho to go back into a centre-back spot, which he does all right at and, you know, you, he's... Guardiola's always done this, hasn't he? He's made defensive midfielders centre-backs. But really, for this particular Manchester City side and how they play, by moving Fernandinho out of that sort of six role and putting him into centre back, they lose so much, um, not chemistry, but team synergy or just that sort of last man defence and transition that he was so good at protecting him. And it really does actually make Manchester City a lot worse. And they concede a lot more goals because of it. Bravo was in goal at Anfield, but I do expect Edison to return for this game as he's been back in full training with Manchester City. So that's a plus for City and a huge minus for Chelsea Football Club. Bernardo Silva will be an absentee for this game also. FIFA have given him a suspension for that controversial tweet he put out. So he's, you know, being an absolutely excellent player. That's a plus for Chelsea. The front three could consist of Aguero, Sterling and say Riyad Mahrez, which isn't bad at all. I think Pep Guardiola might play a 4-3-3 and I think he would have that front three like I just said, but he could absolutely have a midfield of Gundogan in the Fernandinho role, Kevin De Bruyne on one side and David Silva on the other side. Now that is a formidable front six. No matter how weak you are at the back, if you've got that as your front six, and you're at home and you've got Edison back in goal, suddenly you're looking a lot, lot better than you had been for the last few weeks. Guardiola does like to switch it up a lot of the time though, so it could surprise a lot of people. But for me, if I was in his position or if I was a City fan, 
that's the kind of thing that I'd be looking for and hoping for. Maybe Rodri in that role instead of Gundogan in the middle three, but you see what I mean, that kind of vibe. All right, let's speculate a Chelsea lineup and switch over the graphic. Yep, everyone, I am doing this video before Frank Lampard's press conference. But it doesn't really matter because I just want to talk to you about how this game could go more than really the personnel. I do think it's going to be either the 4 2 3 1 or the 4 3 3, or indeed the formation that is 2 and 1 that just changes shape depending on how the game goes. Now, if N'Golo Kante is fit, a midfield free of Jorginho, Kante on the right, and Kovacic on the left might be just the ticket to control the game. Now, people are speculating about Christian Pulisic's fitness. It does look like he might be ready to play again, but if he's not, Mason Mount will play on the left wing and Willian will play on the right. This is in the 4-3-3 formation. Obviously, Tammy Abraham up front. This way, Chelsea can look to control the midfield a bit more with Jorginho, Kovacic and Kante. That's a pretty tough uh, midfield in terms of retaining possession and passing the ball quickly. Frank Lampard could, of course, play a 4-2-3-1 with say Kante and Jorginho, maybe he drops Kovacic, plays Mason Mount in the number 10 and plays Hudson-Odoi on the left or Pulisic if he is indeed fit. I personally think Emerson will be starting at left back in this game, they'll need the pace over Alonso. Actually, maybe even Azpilicueta starts at left back and Rhys James starts at right back. They might see the opportunity to use pace here and Rhys James whether it will come too soon for him, a uh, game away at the Champions. I know he's played in the Champions League, but this is such an important game for Frank Lampard. Who knows? One thing's for sure is Azpilicueta uh, does have an option of playing on the left-hand side. So it's either going to be Rhys James and Emerson, Azpi and Emerson, or Rhys James and Azpilicueta. Wait, confusing. You catch my drift. So as per usual, we can only but speculate the lineup there, but in terms of shape and approach, we kind of know what Frank Lampard's gonna do. So let's talk about that a little bit more and get rid of this analysis screen. All right then, this is going to be a tough game. Frank Lampard likes his team to play with the ball, and when you don't have the ball, you press the hell out of the opposition and you try and get it back. This is gonna be an incredibly hard feat to achieve away at the Etihad, especially when the likes of, say, Kevin De Bruyne and David Silva are on the pitch. Frank Lampard is gonna have to show a touch of the pragmatism in this game, I think, maybe soak it up a little bit, hit on the counter-attack, Willian, Tammy Abraham, Pulisic, even Mount, all very pokey quick players that can kiss, sort of stay on the shoulder, run in behind, and combine around what is a very frail centre-back combination of whatever uh, Guardiola puts out, combine and hopefully score past the superb Edison as I expect him to be back in goal. Saying that though, Chelsea have whenever they've played Liverpool and they've played them twice this season already um, with the Super Cup and the home fixture in the Premier League, they have taken the game to Liverpool and Liverpool don't like it. But Liverpool aren't exactly the same as uh, Manchester City. Liverpool are often happy to play without the ball. Maybe they got rattled because they were like, yeah, have Chelsea have the ball as they sometimes say. But then Chelsea did too much of it and, you know, Klopp was throwing on defensive substitutions and they won the ropes at the end of that second half. Maybe that's what makes Liverpool a better team at the moment in terms of going for a title. They can play with or without the ball. Manchester City don't like playing without the ball. Simple. Guardiola defends by having possession. So they're at home and they will want to keep the ball, like I said, but if Chelsea can use their youthful, energetic pressing players and get it back, they can stick it up and I think this uh, this would be the kind of game that smart money would be City to win, but both teams to score. Even with Edison back in goal, who would probably pull off a few good saves from a few good Chelsea chances, you'd still back Chelsea to score because they create chance after chance after chance. I think they've got the second most big chances created in the Premier League behind only Manchester City. So goals it will probably be. And like I said, even if smart money is City to win, both teams to score. I want to do a really, really, really positive uh, betting prediction. And all, I think Chelsea can win this game, right? I think they can, but I'm going to use my head a little bit more and I'm going to go for a score draw in this game. I'm going to say, predict a... I'm going to predict a real ding-dong free-all and it's going to be Frank Lampard's boys flexing their muscles against the champions. They won't roll over. They've got an amazing team. They'll score goals. I think it's going to be a really exciting game. And just for fun, I'm going to predict a free free. Anyway, what do you guys think? Get down in the comments below and let me hear your thoughts and opinions on this game, who you think will play and what you think the score will be. And remember, 
to subscribe to Yan Plays. Guys, I've just reached a thousand subscribers on my gaming channel. I'm having so much fun uh, playing FIFA at the moment with you guys watching. You guys seem to be really enjoying it. So please go and make sure you go check it out. Um, yeah, Yan Plays, sister channel. Also, follow me on social media at Football Yannick, Instagram and Twitter. And remember, you can join the Discord server via the Patreon link down lower in the description underneath Akative. That's it for me, guys. You lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby